Happy 4th of July. I'm Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11, breaking down today's MLB slate for pitching. Um, got two slates today. You got the early and the late. Um, usually we tackle just the main slate, but, you know, we're feeling a little bit patriotic. Uh, we'll break everything down here. Looking at pitching on this one, uh, definitely not bad. It's, you know, you obviously got Clayton Kershaw, Corey Kluber later on. We'll talk about them. But this early slate, uh, it's pretty fun. Um, you know, obviously it carries the majority of the games. The late slate's a little bit tricky because you have Coors, but then you also have Corey Kluber. You have Clayton Kershaw uh, going up against the uh, Padres and the Diamondbacks between the two of them. It, it's going to be a tough one to just kind of try and figure out what to do and prioritize getting bats and pitching in together. But uh, with those two matchups, I mean, Kluber against the Padres seems like just another 10-plus double-digit strikeout uh, performance again. So uh, we'll look at this this early slate here. Um, some good pitching options on the hill. Uh, you know, is there a clear-cut guy that I'm in love with? No, but I think there are some above-average options that you can take a look at. Um be careful right now. Uh, it is John Lester starting um, for the Cubs. It is Chris Archer in that game. I, I've seen a couple of the sites not have either of them listed, but uh, they are going. Uh, and talking about John Lester here first, uh, you know, we got the DraftKings price tag. It's 8800 uh, I don't know if they were just playing that he wasn't going to pitch today um, and, and had him, you know, lower than usual, but um, we get him at a, at a pretty prime discount here on DraftKings where he's 10-3 on Fandle. It's a pretty big difference. Um, but you look at Lester, I mean, he's been much better at home this year. Uh, you know, 263 Woba allowed compared to 349 on the road. Right-handers have teed off on him uh, away from, you know, Ripley. 399 Woba compared to 267 at home. The strikeout rate's been pretty much the same this year, 24.8%. You look at Tampa Bay, they strike out a ton against lefties, 26.5%, 21st in Woba. They're starting to really drop in, in you know, the Woba department, uh, the VRC Plus as well. Uh, and you remember last year, I mean, if you played, you just targeted lefties against the Rays nonstop, and it's starting to kind of get like that again. So I, I love Lester here. I love him obviously a lot more on DraftKings. That's where I'm really looking to use him the most. Uh, on Fandle, he's usable, but, you know, there are some cheaper options if you want to get some better uh, points per dollar returns. Um, in, in GPPs. We'll talk about Chris Archer on the other side. I, I like him here. Um, you know, a good GPP pivot off of Lester, who I think will garner a little bit more interest just because he's playing at home and the Rays tend to do strike out more. Archer is usually a guy we like to target at Tropicana rather than on the road. But uh, with that being said, I mean, he's still very much in play. I like him as a GPP pivot. I won't be quite going that way in cash games, but you just make the case the Cubs. Uh, you know, bottom half in a little bit against righties this year. Uh, the strikeout rate's been pretty high. This is a lineup that's just been god awful for basically the last few weeks or so, just with all the injuries. So, um, you know, I could definitely see Archer going out there and throwing a pretty good outing. So, uh, I, I do like him. Um, you know, I, I just wish he was a little bit cheaper, and, but you know, it is what it is. So it's Chris Archer. Uh, Looking elsewhere, uh, Jimmy Nelson, this guy's interesting. An interesting kind of dive into his stuff uh, and kind of what he's done this year. You know, the strikeout rate's been phenomenal, but, you know, against righties, it's less than 20%. Um, I, that's a little bit of an issue for me. 31.7% strikeout rate against lefties. You know, looking through his, his you know, who he's pitched against and, and what those strikeout rates have come against, um, you know, it's been heavily left-handed teams. Uh, you look at with San Diego, uh, Boston, you know, uh, Cincinnati, those teams just had, you know, four or five, even, you know, six at times lefties in that lineup or, you know, the pitcher spot, obviously. Um, so he's facing four to five lefties in the lineup uh, at a 31% strikeout rate. I mean, that's, that's going to rack up some Ks there. Um, against a Baltimore team, that's not really going to quite work. 19.7% uh, strikeout rate against righties. Going up against a team that's just going to have seven right-handed bats in there. Um, Seth Smith, you know, projected right now is the only one. So, um, you know, he will get the benefit of having Yovaldo Jimenez pitch uh, and also get that run support and also get, um, you know, another possible strikeout candidate in there. Uh, I do like Nelson, but I'm just kind of curious to see if that strikeout rate can really rise. You know, Baltimore does strike out a ton against righties, 22.7%. Uh, 
Um, you, you also do look at Nelson. He's not bad against righties. I mean, 58% ground ball rate's really solid. He's inducing a 27% soft contact rate. You know, but we're at this price tag now that he's at. We want that strikeout upside. So, um, you know, if, if right-handers are putting the bat on the ball a little bit more, it may not be, you know, hard or, or you know, getting out of the park. But, um, you know, as always, we want those strikeout upside. So I, I like Nelson. Um, you know, I, I think he's a good GPP option. This next guy I'm talking about, I just trust a little bit more in this spot. You know, he doesn't have the upside, but I do think the safety is there for a similar price. Um, so I'll kind of be looking at him. But uh, Nelson's in play for GPPs, but it's just one of those things where, you know, that note right there about the strikeout rate to lefties, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to go out there and see, you know, maybe he just kind of posts a four to five strikeout game two to three earned runs, six innings, and it's kind of pedestrian for the price tag. So um, I, I like him. I, you know, the upside's there, obviously. He's a talented pitcher. Uh, Baltimore still, you know, as I mentioned earlier, does strike out a ton. So um, there is that potential as well that kind of evens out a bit. Uh, James Italian, the next one here, a uh, solid matchup against the Phillies. They have a 23.8% strikeout rate against righties, 29th in Woba. Uh, Italian's been solid since coming back from the DL. He allowed six earned runs over his last four starts. Not a big strikeout pitcher, 20.5%. Uh, you're just kind of hoping the Phillies can strike out a little bit more than usual. Excellent job of keeping the ball on the ground, 50% plus ground ball rate, inducing about a 25% soft contact rate as well. Small road favorite, uh, you know, a ballpark downgrade. Uh, Phillies right around a four run total. It's one of the lower ones on this slate. So uh, that's something that you're definitely going to be looking at because – Geez, I mean, the, the team tolls have been out of control, you know, of late. Um, in terms of the early slate, I mean, they are the only ones currently under four at this time. So, um, you know, it, it's just it's going to be one of those high-scoring slates. But I like Italian. I think he's a great SP2 on this slate. Um, you know, FanDuel, he's sure he's a GPP candidate or a cash game guy if you want to just spend down to pay up on some bats. Um, you know, because, you know, Lester Archery are more expensive options, but they're not – slam dunk guys so you can save the extra you know 1500 uh or sorry you know about 2k actually um and get yourself another batter too so there is that leverage um but i do like tallying quite a bit in terms of a cheap guy uh daniel gossett um you know really cheap sp2 on DraftKings. that's where i'm really looking to use him he's 5500 hell i mean you pair him with lester uh you got some decent floor there you got a decent price tags a um, lot of lot of money to just kind of free spend it wherever you want. So um, that's the appeal for me there. You look at Gossett in Triple A. Um, you know, 8.1 K, K uh, through nine, uh, 2.8 walks per nine. Uh, FIP was about 380. Uh, ERA 3.41. So you know, Triple A was not bad. Flash some strikeout upside in Single A as well as Double A last year. Um, strikeout rate hasn't been shown this year, although White Sox the first start against Houston. Not bad. Uh, 9% swinging strike rate. You know, hasn't faced a lot of strikeout-heavy teams outside of that Chicago game. Um, so he hasn't really gotten a chance to really show it. Um, you know, I'll definitely be giving him a look here. This is the second time that Chicago see him, which is always worrisome for me. Um, but he does roll a decent amount of ground balls, 48%. The 22.7% home run to fly ball ratio is certainly going to neutralize as the season goes on. Um, you know, six six scoreless innings against Chicago last time out. He gave up two er, uh, unearned runs. Um, you know, this team is just they strike out a ton. They're 27th in Woba. You know, sure they're not as bad, but they've been putting out some really bad lineups of late in a big ballpark there as well. So, you know, I like them for a value sense. Um, am I expecting crazy amount of upside? No, but. You know, just about his price tag. He doesn't have to do much to get it, and he gives you some bats to kind of save with. So, looking in the late slate, um, you know, it's five games, I believe. Yes, one, two, three, five games. Uh, Clayton Kershaw headlines this one with Corey Kluber taking on San Diego. Um, we have Brad Peacock as well, Sean Newcomb, but. <sighs> Problem is, we got cores here. We got Rangers, Red Sox. It's David Price, you Darvish. I, you know, the Dodgers platoon value bats. It's not, it's not great. This is not a not a fun line of construction slate for this late one. So, you know, Corey Kluber. You know, I, I'm not spending too much time breaking out Corey Kluber against the Padres because, uh, you know, what he's been doing. I mean, the double digit strikeouts in you know four of his last or sorry six of his last uh, seven starts there. Um, you know, he already has 
seven on the year. Um, he, he's just been phenomenal um, in this stretch. I just continue to see it again. And I don't even feel like 12-6 on DK is that bad of a price tag. Um, you just look at what he's been doing. I, I, I would pay 13-5 for what he's up to right now. So um, like him here, a lot of strikeout upside, obviously, against San Diego. Doesn't take much. I, I do have him edged out over Kershaw just a little bit more. Um, just because Arizona, yes, they haven't been great against lefties. Um, this is a team that, you know, has seen him quite a bit. Um, you know, there's actually a fair amount of lefties possibly in this lineup, too, um, for Kershaw to just be able to kind of chuck away at. But still have to worry about Owings, uh, Goldschmidt, Drury, you know, those bats. But outside of Goldie, no one's really scaring you there. So they should be able to wrap up, rack up some strikeouts as well. Uh, Kershaw at 12 9 on DK, not that expensive. Fandelite, you know, you have no issues with plugging them in. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. I mean, the more I look into this, it's it's hard to rank Kluber ahead of Kershaw. I just both think the 10 plus strikeout upsides there should be able to pick up a win. Um, so, really, those two, I mean, neck and neck are, are your number ones on the night. So, uh, looking elsewhere, though, I mean, you know, David Price, you Darvish, this is an interesting one. Uh, Darvish priced up quite a bit from where he was before um, to a point where I just won't be using him. Um, I, I much actually rather just kind of either stay away from both sides or just make a contrarian Red Sox stack. Um, David Price on the other side, I don't want any piece of him. If they were pricing him down back at 7700 you know, sure, but he's bounced up a little bit more here. Um, I just can't see using him. I like Brad Peacock. This is a guy that I'll probably look at as the SP2 and just fit those value bats in. Um, you, you look at Peacock, I mean, he's been excellent against both sides of the plate, especially in the strikeout rate, 38.2%, 31.6% against lefties, 13.7% uh, swinging strike rate. You know, it, it's been excellent. Uh, Atlanta, they don't have a high strikeout rate. It's sub-20%, but they do rank 21st in WOBA. Um you know, run total a little bit high. It's about four and a half. I don't, I don't like that, but, um, you know, I still think that upside is actually there for Peacock. Uh, in, in, I, I wish, you know, Houston wasn't great against lefties, but uh, Sean Newcomb, he's really talented. Uh, I, you know, I would love to use him at 6,700 as an SP2. I think he's still in play even against this Houston team, but it, it's dangerous. They're such a dangerous team. They can put up runs and bunches. They're heavily right-handed. Uh, they're probably going to roll out eight right-handed bats and the pitcher in this lineup. So, um, Newcomb, it's probably best to just stay another, uh, stay away for another day. Uh, also, we got cores on our hands here, Homer Bailey, Kyle Freeland. Kyle Freeland might be able to go out and just kind of do what he usually does and roll a ton of ground balls and go six innings, but he just doesn't have a ton of upside. Um, and the fact that he's 6K, I'd probably just rather actually use Newcomb if I'm going that way. Um, and then Patrick Corbin here on the opposing side, no way he gets a win. Um, facing a, a Dodgers team that's been rolling really hot, those platoon bats from earlier in the year that were kind of sluggish are starting to come around a little bit more, so I don't expect them to be all that bad against lefties, especially lefties of Corbin who have struggled away from Chase for some reason. Um, so Corbin not really on my radar. This one, it's it's really it's the pitchers in, in Houston and Atlanta. I don't really like targeting in Atlanta, but we're kind of shorthanded here. And then we could look at, at Kluber and Kershaw. So that's going to wrap it up here. A uh, lot to take in. But if you're looking at that early slate, Archer, Lester, Italian, Nelson, Gossett, all in play. Uh, Peacock, Kluber, Kershaw, Newcomb, if you want to go that route um, in the late slate. So that's going to wrap things up here. You can head to NordayFantasyCafe.com. Check out great tools and content.